and let's let's go let's go fire up Vensim. So those who don't have Vensim, pull over to those who do. Okay, let's let's go let's go use Vensim. So I'm gonna I'm gonna forsake my more sophisticated version of Vensim and uh, um, um, satisfy myself with just the version that um, that you folks have. And unfortunately, I, I stand uh, remiss because I'm using a slightly earlier version of this, so it doesn't have quite the same icons. I think you have somewhat more lively icons um, um, afforded on your screen. Okay, so so let's build a model. How do we build a model? Well, we do a new model. Mm -hmm. um, and you notice it asks us for some things up front. Um, it asks us for the time step. It asks us for what unit we want to use to quantify time. Like do we want to say time in years, time in months? Let's say, um, um, sure, time in, uh, time in years. Um, and, and how to, so-called integration, so how to, how to perform solving it. Um, and uh, so I, I just selected that, and and now for a first sort of delay, um, let's go uh, create a little little example. So let's create a um, uh, let's first create a, a stock called People. So how do we do this? Um, we go click on this sort of uh, it says box variable or level. Another term for stock is a level. You click on that and you get into sort of level mode, and you click here and you could say People. Okay, um, that's the population, and we're going to have then a population that um, uh, is develops diabetes. Okay, um, so we're going to have incident cases of diabetes here, and so we're going to go into a flow mode. If I click up here under rate, and once you're in that mode, you could click on the stock and then click to the right. Okay, so this will be say incident cases of diabetes. Now what that means is those are the new cases of diabetes. Okay. Um, so these are people and we won't um, pay attention to them after, after that. Um, they go out sort of outside the, the scope of the model. Okay. Um, I could have named, uh, could have named people better. I should have called it normal glycemic population. But this is just an, an illustrative example. And what I'd like you to now create is a thing called um, uh, annualized diabetes um, uh, incident rate, or you could call it diabetes incidence rate. Okay, it's a chance per year to develop diabetes. Okay, so we'll, we'll, so how did I do that? I went over here to to, to variable, and I created a, a variable that will be a constant here. So I clicked on that. I got into this mode, and some is modal, and clicked and I typed the diabetes incidence right. Okay, who needs help here? Who needs help? Okay. Um, so once I've done that, I'm, I'm, I've actually come long strides towards creating my first runnable model. To, to, to finish this, first, what do we have to do to, to finish this model? There's a couple things we need to specify. What is it? Dependencies. Dependencies. Okay, so how do I illustrate dependencies in Benson? Is it with this guy? <laughs> Experiential learning. You know, we could. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Don't don't you know respect him from a distance and, and use him when you have to, but don't overuse him. Um, okay. So click on the arrow here, and these are directional. So you gotta. If what does incident cases of diabetes depend on? Tell me what it depends on. What are the dependencies, uh, logically? This is a first order delay. This depends on? Good. OK. Um, so it depends on that and the stock. And, and yes? This thing? Um, uh, the answer is uh, you, could, you could try. I mean, we could, we could aim it. Solidly, it's fine to do that. Um, it, uh, you know, it's, it's semantically, it's the same. Okay. Um, it's a good question, Kurt. Um, so I, I appreciate questions. Um, uh, so, so you'll notice there are these little handles you can use to kind of uh, drag those around. Okay. 
So, so we have some dependencies. Are there any other dependencies we need to put in if this is just a simple first order delay? No. Okay, so, okay, so, so that's a in nice indication of dependencies. Can we just run this model now? Okay, I'll try it. It says errors cannot be simulated. <laughs> um, so, uh, so what do we need to do to fill in this model? Okay, so we need to do uh, equation. Okay, where does the equation? Do we need an equation for the for the stock? Does the stock have an equation, folks? Okay, do we have to specify that equation? No, it actually just a stock's evolution over time depends purely on what inflow and outflow. You got it. Yes. Um, so how it changes over time depends on the inflows and outflows, but its initial condition has to be specified. Um, otherwise, it's in the null space. Of it. Um, but never mind. Like to, yeah. You mean into this equation here? Yeah. Would you ever want to? Um, uh, uh, sort of mumble. Um, yeah, yeah. There are cases. There, there are rare, rare, rare cases. I think I've done it. Well, let's put it this way. Sometimes I fix things here because Vensim has some issues sometimes. Um, and like uh, the one, one problem I've seen is if you first draw the stock going out and then I say, oops, I'm going to delete it and then draw it going in, it actually doesn't change the sign. And so I go in there and I fix that. But I don't, I'm not sure I've ever like gone in and put something odd here. Um, m m maybe once in my youth or something. It's a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's put it. Uh, let's put an initial value of a thousand here. I'm kind of putting aside good modeling practice. Um, uh, we'll put an initial value of a thousand. Okay, um, and you'll notice that now this is this is no longer black. What does that mean? Me means we're in the clear. Yeah, you know, we're we're in a good situation. Okay. Okay, so let's make the diabetes incidence rate uh, two percent. So I just clicked on that. I, oh, sorry, folks, I forgot to emphasize. I went into equations mode to click on this. That's how I got there, and I went into equations mode to click on this, and I make it to 0.02. Okay, so what is that? Okay, well, we'll come back to what it means because it depends on how it's used. So 0 0.02, um, and what should I put in for this formula? I really should have defined this formula first to be clear. Conceptually clear. What's this formula? If this is a first order delay, what's the formula here? This is an incidence rate. So it's. Oh, okay. Times this. Why? Why is it times? By the way, I could put it either way because it commutes, right? But but why is it times rather than people divided by rate? Okay, so so let's let's reason this through. Um, when would I put divided by if this thing were a time, a delay? Now, why is that? Because, ladies and gentlemen, I told you that. Remember, remember um, flows. What what's the if if a stock is measured in people? What's the so its dimension is people. What's the dimension associated with the flow from that stock? It, per, people per time. Hmm? People per time coming up. If there's a flow going in, it's people per time. The rate, how many people are coming in per day. Remember I said people are coming into the hospital at 10 per day. People are leaving at 10 per day. Remember. Flows, one of the ways you can recognize them heuristically is, okay, we're dealing with a rate, something per time. The units, ladies and gentlemen, associated with this flow are people per time. So we could have people divided by some delay, where the delay is measured in time. Say, they spent two hours in the hospital, so divided by if the time unit of the model were two, over where hours, I divide people by two, right? Mm -hmm. Alternatively, I can have it people times diabetes incidence rate. Now, what is the 
unit? What's the dimension of diabetes incidence rate? What must it be? Speak, you. Yeah, okay, it's a fraction per, per, per time. That's right. So the, the rate would be one over time. The dimension of it would be one over time. Now, now that sounds weird. What you well, you can think of it as a chance per time. Like 2% chance per year in this case. That's what 0.02 would mean. Because the dimension associated with the chance of probability is a fraction. It's a fraction of all dice, that, of all coin flips that end head up. And it's therefore the number of coin flips that end head up divided by the number of coin flips. Therefore, its dimension is unit dimension, it's dimension less, as we'll say. And, um, and so when we talk about probability, its dimension is, is one. It, it has no special unit. It's not measured in people. It's not measured in time. And this, this here, diabetes incident rate, it's going to be chance per unit time. So its unit is one over time. Hmm? Does that make sense? So you get a certain chance per unit time. Remember, it's not, a it's not just a, a, a probability. It's a probability per unit time. So it actually can be greater than one. Probability can only be as great as one, but a probability per unit time means to be greater than one. It just means it goes, you have a really high chance per unit time um, you know, of, of leaving. Mm -hmm. And suppose, so ladies and gentlemen, this diabetes incidence rate, it's 0.02 right now. How long on average does that mean someone spends in this people stock before de developing diabetes? 50 years, it's just one over that. By the way, that's another sign that the dimensions are of, of this rate are, are one over time because one over whatever that thing is is a time. Okay? So this is a so the average amount of time they spend there is 50, 1 over 0 0.02. And that's a time. Right? Um, so um, here, we could have people times diabetes incidence rate, times 0.02, which is a chance per unit time. In other words, it gives a result that's people per time. Or we could have people divided by the delay, 50 years, in which case it's people per time. Does that make sense? People? Okay, this is, this is an important practical point. Don't get them confused. Don't put people divided by an instance rate or people times a delay. It doesn't make sense, dimensionally. Now you're saying people are trained by a flow that's people years. No, no, don't do that. Um, okay, um, so it's times this instance rate. Okay, so what do we have here? 0.02 is the instance rate, and, and uh, this is people times this diabetes incidence rate. So each person has a 2% chance per year of developing diabetes. And here's the number of people, all right? By the way, you'll notice Venson does allow you to specify units, and we'll come back to that in a later lecture. Okay. You could actually t ask it to check these units and all those sort of things. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, let's run this thing. Ready? Let's run. Okay, do I want to save it? No. Um, okay. So I ran it. What can I do now to look at it? Click on the thing. You mean this guy? This thing? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Double click. Double click on it, and then, and then I could do a graph, for example. And here I see people going down like that, right? How if I were to look at the flow? What would it? This flow out. What would it look like? Basically the same thing, just scaled. Mm hmm. Just scaled, scaled down. Okay. You know you're right. I always double click it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the the uh, inventiveness of youth. Um, okay. <laughs> Good. I've just been doing this for about 25 years. So. Um, actually, 20 20 years for this particular program. Um, uh, so okay, fine. So yeah, you 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 don't have to double click it. Um, but if you're an old fogey, you can. Um, okay, so uh, so we could we could run this thing interactively, of course, if we want to see how this changes. 
by using this running man and um, and say yeah and we could we could adjust it and we'll see you know we can make it larger and people disappear sooner we can make it make it zero and 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 uh, excuse me, zero um, you could just click on that and it'll be flat or you could make it uh, you know uh, some some uh, very short very short thing etc okay so so this allows us to kind of um, examine the dynamics associated with this um, with this first order delay. Now, if we have a competing risk, um, such as death, we could uh, we could add that in here. So people could develop diabetes, or they could die first, for example. So how do we add that? What do we add? The running man. Oh, okay. So if, if I'm in this mode, I could do stop here. Oh. It's kind of, I don't know if you're, you're, you're the, the control on your computer looks exactly the same, but in mine, it's yeah. like a stop sign. Um, um, okay, so, um, so if we want to add a flow, how do we do that? Oh, sorry, if we want to add death as a, as a as, so add a competing risk for death, how would we do that? Yeah, we could add a different flow. So we, we click on the flow mode, then what do we click on? Where do we? It's a, okay. Start up people and then go, okay. And then we'd say death, for example, right? And then um, we could have a, a mortality rate here. Mm -hmm. So all I did is, what did I do here? I, I clicked here um, under this mode. I clicked on people because it's coming from people. And I clicked out here, and then I typed death, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then over here, I want to add a constant. So I use this so call it variable auxiliary constant. Click here, and I'll have a mortality rate. Mm -hmm. Mortality rate. Um, But you know, folks, I'm going to change my mind, and I'm going to employ this this um, gentleman up here to to clean this up. So I'm going to actually delete that thing I just added. So if you click on that, now you have to again, you got to treat that guy with respect. Um, you got to be careful where you click. But I'm going to delete that, and then I'm going to switch out of that mode quickly. Okay, um, I'm going to instead add something called uh, um, mean. Um, uh, mean lifespan, mean life, lifespan. Um, just to, to see how we phrase this in this other way. Okay, so this is the mean lifespan. Let's say the mean amount of time to go to, for somebody to die. And what does death depend on? Okay, the mean lifespan and what else? People, because if there's no one to die, if there's no one in people, there's no one to die, and therefore there's going to be no death. There. Okay, so I could go click on death. So I switch it to equation mode, click on death. What's the formula for this? What was the formula for our earlier one? Okay, so earlier we had people times diabetes incidence rate. So here we have people divided by... Um, mean lifespan, okay? And then mean lifespan, or maybe I'll make, uh, you know, 88 for 88 years. Um, why do I know it's years? Because remember when I first created the model, I did model settings, and and I had said uh, that the units for time are year. Okay? And the final thing I'll do is for people, well, why is people black? Well, it's actually just because it wants me to check that what it's going on. Is this correct, ladies and gentlemen? It's saying for the formula for people that it's what does this integ mean? Integration, and it says minus death minus in case of diabetes. Is that correct? Yeah, it actually is. It's it's integrated out because these are flows out. There's no flow in right now. So so um, uh, you could phrase this as uh, the integral of, of those things. So so let's let's explain this a little bit more. So if we had a stock and we had a flow in, call it um, 
a flowing, call it, um, uh, X, and another flow in, excuse me, another flow out, call it Y. Hmm? Right? Um, yeah, I don't, sorry, I, 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 I'd like to pick my variables here, but I'm going to call the stock X, excuse me, and I'll have the flow in call, be called F, F1, um, flow 1, and flow 2, flow, flow 2, flow out. Someone who's more comfortable with differential equations, I just want to connect to the people who know differential equations. Um, what, give me, give me the formula for, for, um, what this, what this is. Sorry? Okay, yeah, so dx dt, the, the rate of change of x equals f1 minus f2, right? This is the rate of change, and that's, that's just f1 minus f2. You know, if, if neither, if both were zero, it wouldn't be changing at all. If f1 is as big as f2, then dx dt equals zero. You have an equal amount of inflow and outflow. That's just where the spigot is putting out as much water as it's draining exactly. So that helps to this constant. And just to explain where this comes from, if you multiply, mathematicians hate this. Oh. <laughs> uh, so if I were to, <laughs> okay, Kurt, keep an eye out. Um, if, if I were to multiply the dt over here, um, and the better way to do this is to agree it's, it's delta x, delta t, and, and sort of uh, multiply it by there. And then I integrate both sides. And what happens when I integrate dx? Okay, I get, yeah. Um, x of x of uh, t minus x at 0, because um, I'm integrating it from, from 0 to t. And here I get integ of this thing, and this dt is implicit. And that's exactly what we have there. That's why it says integ of this thing. This is the integral from 0, the first time in the model, whatever the first time is, I said 0, and then to the current time. That, that's where that this sort of thing comes from for those who are in time. In, in that direction. So this is the integral of that, and that's equivalent to saying the derivatives are just defined by the flows. Okay, so you don't have to change anything here. You know, 99% of the time, maybe 99.5% of the time, this is correct. Just, you, you want to kind of look at it just to, to be sure when you add a flow. Okay, so, so now we have uh, a model which includes competing risks. So we could run this thing, and um, I'm going to say no, I don't want to save it, and I want to overwrite it. And so here I have people, and there's some number of people dying. I just clicked on that. And then there's some number of people who are incident cases of, of diabetes, um, some small number here. Um, OK, this is uh, one of the things we, we have reported to us in the final minutes here. So suppose, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to figure out how many people in this model have gotten diabetes over time? Yes? Okay, so so uh, I think what was asked here is if you want to change this this uh, x and y. Oh, for people? Okay. So there we go there. Yeah? Okay, so, so that's a great question. So uh, there's a couple of ways that you could change the settings for graphs, okay? Um, uh, I'll tell you the, the one you'd need in this case, but one thing to be aware of is if you right click on this, oh, it says in Benson PLA you can't change the tool option, okay? But the, what you can do is, hopefully it's true in Benson PLA, you can create custom graph here, and and uh, you could say a new custom graph, and I want to define, you know, um, scaled, you know, custom scaled graph, and I want to define, I want to display people, um, and I want the y min to be zero, and I want the maximum to be, I don't know, ten thousand. Okay, um, and uh, 
you'll notice that uh, I can also set the X min and X max here, okay? And, uh, and then once I have this, I could then display it and it will display it, okay? So, um, so that was, uh, uh, that was, that was good. So let me, um,